So, if you don't know the answer, you can be silent. If nobody asks a question, you can be silent. There's no need to be embarrassed about it or to be stuck on it. But you cannot overcome being stuck if you think that somehow you would be guilty if you were stuck. So you see, all I'm trying to say is that the basic common sense about the nature of the world, the earth is not a big rock infested with living organisms any more than your skeleton is bones infested with cells. The earth is geological, yes, but this geological entity grows people and our existence on the earth is a symptom of the solar system and its balance as much as the solar system in turn is a symptom of our galaxy and our galaxy in its turn is a symptom of the whole company of galaxies goodness only knows what that's in i find it a little difficult to say what the subject matter of this seminar is going to be because it's too fundamental to give it a title I'm going to talk about what there is. Now, the first thing, though, that we have to do is to get our perspectives with some background about the basic ideas which, as Westerners living today in the United States, influence our everyday common sense, our fundamental notions about what life is about. And there are historical origins for this which influence us more strongly than most people realize. Ideas of the world which are built into the very nature of the language we use and of our ideas of logic and of what makes sense altogether. And these basic ideas I call myth, not using the word myth to mean simply something untrue. But to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth is an image. In terms of which we try to make sense of the world. And we at present are living under the influence of two very powerful images. Which are in the present state of scientific knowledge inadequate. And one of our major problems today is to find an adequate, satisfying image of the world.